Hey, you may or may not have heard, we are in the midst of planning our first ever film festival and we could not be more excited with our promotional artwork done to, done by Cat Cushion. And this video is sponsored by her and her artistic endeavors and you, yes you watching this right now, can also have Cat do your wildest dreams come to life. Click the link in the descriptions below to get in touch with her. <laughs> What's going on? Welcome to Victims and Villains. If you guys are new to our content, we create content like what you're watching right now simply to educate and engage individuals like yourselves on mental health awareness and suicide prevention through pop culture. My name is Captain Nostalgia. I have the privilege of being a writer, podcaster, and our film festival director for a little festival we call Horrific Hope. If you guys would like more information on where to get your tickets, what this year's lineup is, and... Uh, more details about the festival along with podcasts, more movie reviews like what you're watching or slash reading right now. All of our social media, Patreon, and most importantly, our mental health resource library. Click the links in the descriptions below. Now I'm going to establish this right up front. I am not a TV guy. I think I've established this on a few occasions. That's why there's not a whole lot of TV that you see coming in to this channel. And if it is, it's not me covering it. And that's why a lot of you guys uh, in the last year kept asking for my full thoughts on Slasher, Flesh and Blood, and I never got around to watching it, so I apologize immensely that I still have not finished that season. Guess I should probably get around to it, though, because they are making another season, so... Probably one of my favorite television events that has happened in the last five years is without a doubt Shudder's original cursed film right here. I highly recommend this. If you guys haven't checked out Shudder, get the free trial just to watch this. Uh, and I also just want to recommend that if you guys are physical media collectors like mine, like me, this is definitely something to have in your collection. But Shudder's back with Cursed Films 2, and I'm going to be talking about the first two episodes on this spoiler-free review. Now, it be the Shudder will return to do Cursed Films every Thursday, beginning this upcoming Thursday, April 7th. The films that we're going to be talking about on here specifically are going to be The Wizard of Oz and Rosemary's Baby. I'm going to say this right off the bat. With The Wizard of Oz, it's interesting because when you go through the original Cursed Films series, the first five episodes, it's such a heavy watch. Like, if I could recommend anything, any knowledge going into that series is don't binge it. Because you can't help but feel just, like, really sad, depressed, and heavy after every episode. Especially The Twilight Zone. But it's interesting to, that they that this series decided to start off with A, a non-horror movie and B, The Wizard of Oz. I don't know where you stand with The Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz is among one of my favorite films. It is a film that I watched every year around Thanksgiving time. It was kind of a tradition, and I love that this gave me an excuse to go back and rewatch that movie. The Wizard of Oz is such a, a wholesome film that I can't help but watch it with a smile on my face the entire time I'm watching it. But also at the end of the day, I know that there are a lot of conspiracy theories, uh, a lot of things that happened on this and this movie that this film explores. What I like so much about Cursed Films, starting with The Wizard of Oz, is that it it lays the groundwork that this is a season that's not just going to be focused on films that are horror or horror adjacent, but films that are have legacies of being cursed and or uh, some variation thereof. The Wizard of Oz, the reason why I think this episode is so great is because it feels like a breath of fresh air for this series, that it's not just telling you, oh, these are all the terrible things that happened while we were shooting this film. No, it actually dives in and deconstructs a lot of the conspiracy theories and the mythology that's built around the making of this movie. Then we flip over and we get Rosemary's Baby. I don't know how many of you watching this right now were like me coming into this season. I had never seen Rosemary's Baby. and I changed that before I watched this episode. Mary Baby is a very subtle character study um, on religion and uh, fanatical religion is what I'll say. 
I don't want to give anything away. It's one of those movies that if you go in as blind as possible, it's way more effective. Rosemary's Baby is a really interesting film to uh, juxtapose to The Wizard of Oz for your first two episodes. One of the reasons that I say that is because Rosemary's Baby also kind of dives into a lot of the conspiracy theories, but also at the same time kind of returns the series to its roots in discussing a lot of the terrible things that happened around or uh, would happen to those people, those individuals that would work on this film much, uh, very shortly after. What I find interesting specifically about the Rosemary's Baby episode is that it's actually looking at, uh, it spends a lot of its time looking at, uh, Roman Polanski and Sharon Tate, uh, specifically a little bit of Roman's later life that he's kind of become infamous for. And then on top of that, the, untimely death of Tate and how all of that is actually connected to Charles Manson. But these, this as well is that there's these series, when you go back and watch the first one, the first one, the episodes are like 25 to 30 minutes, which I'm a cinephile and I love finding out a lot of these, this stuff. And so what I like about this season coming in is that the episodes are actually 45 minutes a piece. As I've mentioned, I have only seen the first two episodes of this new series. I don't know if they return later to the 30 minute format, come, come a little bit later. The series Behind the Monsters did that fluctuation where it was, one was a half hour, one was 40 minutes, one was uh, 28 minutes, and it just kind of fluctuated. It does, you don't have a whole lot of that fluctuation yet. That's not to say that the fluctuation couldn't land with the other three episodes. I'm ready to give this through our, our Rorschach rating scale, and I'm going to absolutely give this a 5 out of 5. I absolutely am thrilled with this series. This is one of the most anticipated series I had coming into this year, and Shudder did not disappoint. The Wizard of Oz is fascinating. It gave me a new movie to watch after after I got done, and Rosemary's Baby is also, it's very sad, but it's also very fascinating at the same time. The thing that I appreciate so much about Cursed Films is that it evokes so much emotion from myself as a viewer, and I hope it also invokes a lot of emotion from you as a viewer as well. So if you guys have seen Cursed Films, the original 2020 series that Shudder did, drop your favorite episode or the saddest thing that you found or the most interesting thing about the original series below. This series, I'm actually not going to go ahead and do a mental health moment for it. I feel like a lot of these episodes in terms of mental health speaks for themselves and I just want to encourage you even more to watch it. I do, however, want to encourage anyone watching this video right now that if you or someone you know is struggling with suicide, addiction, self-harm, or depression, please stop this video, check out our mental health resource library, and dig deep into them. I don't know how many of you watching this this morning needs to be reminded or needs to be, well, just let them, let known that you have value and that you have worth and that you're not alone in this. So please consider our resources and check out Curse Films 2 when it begins streaming exclusively on Shutter, meaning April 7th. And check out Curse Films Volume 1.